you and, you and I have different opinions. Uh, that's a rhetorical question. That, uh, that, that with respect to this issue, um, just to clarify, uh, Mike Atkinson was in our group and in front of us last week. Did a very good job of, of telling us what he did, and what he didn't do. We now know for sure what it is that he was able to do as part of his investigation. Uh, he did not request records of the call from the president. And uh, the reason he did is he cited the difficulty of working through all of that would have probably meant that he couldn't comply with the 14-day time frame. So even he did not try to uh, uh, overrun the White House's executive privilege over the conversation that the president had with uh, President Zelensky. Um, he also said um, uh, in his letter, I also determined, this is quoting Michael, I also determined that there were reasonable grounds to believe that information relating to the urgent concern appeared credible. Now, that's a different statement than a flat out, it's credible. So just again, a rhetorical statement. Is there anything in statute from your, your lawyers in advising you that says that the determination of urgent concern lies solely with the ICIG? No, sir, I was never advised by my uh, legal counsel to, to that effect. All right, has the, uh, to your knowledge, has the Justice Department ever weighed in uh, to say that the fact that DNI can't make a separate decision with respect to that seven-day process, that the matter is not of urgent concern, as, you've, uh, as your team decided? The matter of urgent concern is a legally defining term. It's pretty much either yes or no. Well, it, apparently that's not the case, Admiral, because uh, IG said it was, and, and, it, and you're saying it's not under that legal definition because it involved the president. He says, I, last time I checked... You're pretty familiar with chains of command, I know. He's not in, uh, you're not, uh, he's not in your chain of command. You're in his chain of command. And so, th for very definite reasons, appear to be credible, it doesn't meet the statutorily urgent concern definition with respect to the whistleblower protections of, of the IG. Uh, and, and your team made that, made, that, made that call. The Inspector General made a different call. Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, hey, my team did say, not John, make the uh, decision. It, John, was, it was the I'm Department trying, of I'm Justice Office of Legal Counsel that made the determination that it was not urgent concern. All we wanted to do was just check and see. And to me, uh, it just seemed prudent with the matter at hand right now to be able to just make sure that in fact it did. And when it didn't, I want to say once again, I endeavored to get that information to this committee. Okay, sir, just to clarify. That the was role. moments ago the acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, testifying before the House Intelligence Committee about the newly released whistleblower complaint. Of course, this is what's rocked uh, Washington. Crystal and I are digesting this in real time. We have this, I think, about an eight page document in front of us. Part one is about the transcript of the phone call, which we learned about yesterday. Part two is about an alleged White House cover-up of these calls. Right. Crystal, what do you make of this so far? Well, and what we've heard so far yeah. from the acting DNI, is a lot of debate today about whether this whistleblower complaint was handled properly mm -hmm. um, because it was initially withheld from the committee that should have been able to see it. So right. a lot of the debate that you were listening to there is around those sort of technical details. Perhaps more explosive is what is in the actual whistleblower complaint, which was released this morning, and as you're sort of pointing to here, Sagar, the first portion concerns what's already essentially been reported, that very controversial phone call between the president of our country and the president right. of Ukraine, and whether or not he pressured uh, the president of Ukraine to go after Joe Biden. New, though, is information indicating that the records of those calls may have been essentially covered up, handled in a different system than would typically be used to store this type of record of this conversation, the implication being that the president's team, the people around yeah. him, knew that this was a really so bad look. The contra is, is that the moment I read this, I, I was pretty sure I knew what was happening. Basically, if you'll recall, in the early days of the administration, the president, while he was speaking, I think, with the Filipino president, Duterte, the transcript of his entire call was actually leaked to the media. There were other elements of his call with the Australian president, I also think with the Mexican president. That ignited a firestorm because the bureaucracy was strategically leaking elements of the president's phone call. So the, the way in which those phone calls and the transcripts of those calls was immediately changed in order to guarantee the privacy and that the, the parts of this wouldn't leak. So the, I, this is once again how I could see it, which is that they're going to say that there was a cover-up at the White House, that's what the Democrats are going to say, and the Republicans are going to say, no, people within the intelligence community keep leaking the president's phone calls. That's why that there's a new system in place. Once again, there's enough ambiguity here to be able to see whatever you want to see. Yeah, no, I yeah. think you're exactly right. That 
that is how the president's right. team will spin it. I mean, look, it doesn't look good that they tried to handle this in right. a different way. There's also indications in this whistleblower complaint that other sensitive calls may have been handled Allegedly, in this way. Yeah. And we should Allegedly. Know this guy right. was not on the call, or this, this man or woman was not on the call. This is based uh, on sources right. um, from the whistleblower. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's almost written more like a journalistic document than a whistleblower complaint. Well, that's but, what's very troubling to me, Crystal, which is I look at this, I look at this appendix, I see all of this put together. This is a professional document. This is opposition research level document you have. I mean, basically this guy hears about the phone call, has the allegation about the uh, uh, the cover-up, and then is just citing open source documents based on news reports, including one from the Hill, including the Hill's own John Solomon, and it just seems to me that this was, he crafted a narrative, he knew exactly what he wanted to, to lay out to the press. I mean, this, this is a document which was intended to be released to the public. It's a dossier. I don't know yeah. that the professionalism of it detracts mm -hmm. from it. I think the underlying implication is very troubling, that the president would try to pressure you Ukraine, and then it would then be, you know, there would essentially be an attempted cover-up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good. But you can also see in here where this is heading, right? Yeah. Based on the whistleblower complaint, there's all kinds of more people that Democrats will want yeah. to talk to. There's yes. all sorts of more It'll documents that they're going to... Yeah. So you can expect many more hearings like what we're seeing today uh, and a lot more media coverage of all of the ends of this right. and exactly where they Ukraine leave. gate is back, folks. It never ends. Here to stay. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. We will keep you abreast <laughs> of all the latest. See you later.